Thank you, sir. Thank you for the kind words. <coughs> this is my topic. Uh, I think Bansi sir gave me this topic when he was angry on me because he's given me four sections, first line therapy, prevention, type one, and GDF, all to be covered in four, 15 minutes. No, but I have covered, so I can skip the slide, sir. Thank you. <laughs> so we know metformin is derived from this plant, which most of us know. It's also in our country. Just to touch upon the journey, you can see on the right hand side how the metformin has sustained the development of all these molecules from last 100 years. This is also a 100 year old molecule, though it came into picture in 1950s. And FDA approved only half late, that is 1995. So this is a frontline soldier I always keep telling in my talks. Metformin is like a horse. All the other drugs are jackies. That's because of my research background where any new drug comes, SGLT2, TZDs, or Tirzapatide, or Triple G, whatever comes, all the inclusion criteria, metformin failure. Add on this drug, above, if you see all the clinical trials of SGLT2s, 50% on an average, people were on metformin. Added to that was these drugs. So it's something like a horse and a jackie concept. And I was just for this study looking at the PubMed results when I talked about the mechanism of action, I was just going through, you can see the results which I highlighted 2,500, 11,000 in the last five years. This is the number of searches in the PubMed which is there. And of course the efficacy, the concasings I was talking about, the insulin sensitivity which the, the other molecules are doing, but this is which the molecule which has been doing help for us from last than more than 100 years. And there is no direct trial until the recent trial with linagliptin that the other uh, uh, things which we did not show. And this is the multiple mechanism of metformin which has been contemplated in various diseases, including in the cancers which studies are ongoing even today. And anti-aging properties they're looking at. So there are a lot of other explorations happening towards this mechanism of, the beneficial mechanism of metformin. Just to touch upon at the liver, at the muscle level and the fat, it improves the insulin sensitivity, definitely. It's the intestine, the microbiota also, so there is an improvement in the hepatic and the peripheral sensitivity. And across this continuum, this is what is metformin is indicated. Pre-diabetics, diabetics, type 1, and GDM. This is one drug which is there across this spectrum of indications. Now let us look at one by one what the guidelines talk about. Pre-diabetes, it has been used to prevent or to delay the onset of diabetes. It significantly reduces the incidence as per this uh, diabetes prevention trial. And this is the latest ADA 2024 which talks about metformin intervention in diabetics, uh, uh, BMI more than 35, age 25 to 60, women with prior GDM, and it has got a strongest evidence base demonstrated long-term safety as far as uh, pharmacological therapy. Now, what are the other guidelines? Just to touch upon the Canadian, the international IDF say that the lifestyle intervention, when it is not sufficient, you can add on this as a first-line drug. Till today, it is going on. Of course, it reduces the the <coughs> rate of conversion from pre-diabetes to diabetes. And this is the AS consensus 2023, which talks about the metformin. Still, it is there and it recommends metformin as a first line drug. And this is one of the papers which talks about the bigonoid metformin, which the elevated fasting or post-load plasma glucose concentrations, long-term metformin monotherapy can delay or possibly prevent the onset of diabetes. That is the evidence which is there. And of course, in pre-diabetics, I'll skip these slides uh, quickly because there was a oration by Dr. K. Singh, I think. Uh, the DPP, which is the randomized clinical trial with about 3,000 plus, and you can see 850MG, intensive life control and placebo control. What I want to emphasize in this trial, it is not about the metformin. It is a lifestyle intervention. You can see there, reduced by 58%. And none of us spend time to talk about this lifestyle, which is free of cost, and we do not encourage our patients and many of us do not follow the lifestyle changes ourselves as well. So this is very important slide, not to talk about the metformin, but to talk about the lifestyle intervention, what is it? But of course, when you do the sub-analysis, you can see in obese individuals, in younger individuals, and women with previous history of GDM, the metformin definitely matches up with the lifestyle intervention, which is otherwise free of cost. EDA recommends that the prevention of diabetes should be considered in all adults with a high risk, with the age group, BMI, higher FBG and higher A1C and individuals with a prior GDM. This is what it is there. And of course, the glucose lowering medications in the type two management, the metformin still stands as the number one drug, which is there. Of course, in, if you see on the right hand side, it is compared with the GLP-1 with a high efficaciousness when it comes to the reduction of A1C. 
our own RSSDI metformin can be started in the pre-diabetics failing to achieve any benefit on lifestyle modification. And this is what they have given about the how to initiate. And of course, ESC EASD does not recommend pharmacological intervention in non-diabetic hyperglycemias. And NICE guidelines clinically uh, uh, talk about the metformin if the BMI is above 35 and to try metformin 6 to 12 months and discontinue if there is no improvement and then to monitor renal function initially and periodically every six months. As a first line, of course, as I said, it is the ARS and the JAKI uh, is various other drugs which we definitely add on. It has to be there and you can see on the right hand side the various benefits and our, all of us are utilizing this drug enough, I feel. And of course, this was way back in UKPDS which reduced the risk of diabetes related endpoints and deaths also with all cause mortality reduction compared to insulin and sulfonylureas with a 10 year follow up. Now we have a 20 year data as well. Of course, we should be aware about the side effects, the renal insufficiency. Up to 45, you can use the same dose, whatever the patient is on. Below 45, you need to downtrate it by 50%, and below 30, you need to stop. So EDA 2024 diabetic treatment recommendations in adults with diabetes and cost-related barriers, consider using this lower cost <coughs> medications for glycemic management in the context of the risk for hypoglycemia, weight gain, cardiovascular and kidney events, and other adverse effects. It's inexpensive. It can be compared with sulfonylureas, and of course, the safety is estimated as long as the EGFR is above 30. Now, let us look at in the management of type 1 diabetes, the role. Is it a good or a bad idea? Again, looking at the PubMed results, you can see about 200 talked about the, the metformin in this. These are all the various studies which have shown about the advantages of metformin in diabetics. Let me touch upon the ADA recommendation in individuals with type 1 diabetes and overweight or obesity, metformin may have an adjuvant role in reducing the insulin resistance. So there are several studies which have shown that doses between 1 gram to 2 grams and its use seems to be associated with the reduced insulin requirement and less weight gain with little effect on the A1C part. And this is one study which talked about the type 1 in uh, diabetics with metformin 1 gram and there is a little effect on the glycemic control, but it had the reduction in the cardiovascular risk factors, that is something very important when you add as an adjuvant. It's called the removal, reducing the metformin vascular adverse. And the metformin, the type 1, as far as the NICE guidelines, it is recommended in type 1 diabetics with a BMI above 25 who want to improve glucose control while minimizing their effect, if effective insulin dosage. That means to reduce the, the number of units. And the ADA followed stating that the adding metformin to insulin therapy may reduce insulin requirements and improve the metabolic control in overweight or obese patients with poorly controlled type 1 diabetics. And of course, we have other evidences where the metformin improves the glycemic variability in type 1s. And finally, touch upon the GDM. We know 1 in 6 live births are affected by this hyperglycemia, and about more than 7 lakh pregnancies are affected by this pregnancy-induced hyperglycemia. Now, this is the evidence way back in 1994, which talks about the congenital malformations in offspring of diabetic women treated with the OHAs during embryogenesis, that is in the first trimester. And there was no major congenital malformation in infants with diabetic women, no obvious indications for therapeutic abortions in patients who have been taking the metformin during the embryogenesis period. And of course, the guidelines, the NIH and the clinical excellence suggest that the metformin as a first line drug in GDM, WHO, Australian uh, uh, associations, and various guidelines are modified met their guidelines to include metformin because of the growing evidence. And of course, the the Diabetes Canada said the insulin is the first line. Metformin may be used in an alternative to insulin, which is good safety data in pregnancy. And this is the FIGO guidelines, which talks about uh, insulin, glyburide, and metformin are safe and effective therapies in GDM during the second and third trimesters and may be initiated as a first line treatment after failing to achieve the control with lifestyle modifications. So this is something which is there. And the MIC trial, 2008, the metformin in gestational diabetes prospective randomized multicentric trial with the women uh, about 750 numbers, both in Australia and New Zealand. And this was not associated with increased perinatal complications as compared to the insulin. And the women preferred metformin over insulin any day, pricks. That is a, 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 a satisfaction score which showed. And this is called MITI study, where metformin in diabetic, uh, type 2 diabetic patients in pregnancy, multicentric international randomized placebo control, 25 centers across Canada and Australia, metformin versus placebo, about 500 women, and metformin had several maternal glycemic and neonatal adiposity benefits. And this was the trial design for want of time we'll not get into, but look at the results. Women in the metformin group achieved better glycemic control and required less insulin dose. 
women in the metformin group gained less overall weight and less weight per week. Fewer women in the metformin group had cesarean sections. Fewer women in the metformin reported serious adverse group than in the placebo group. And there was no difference between the women who received metformin and those receiving placebo when it comes to the composite of neonatal morbidity and mortality. And this is the same mighty which converted into mighty kids after 24 months of follow-up after those deliveries and there was no other anthropomorphic uh, measurements or difference in these children who were born to these mothers. The role of adding metformin in insulin resistant diabetic pregnant women, this is another evidence, the randomized control trial, which talks about adding on a metformin to insulin therapy in women with insulin resistant diabetes with pregnancy seems to be effective in proper glycemic control in a considerable proportion of women along with the benefits of reduced hospital stay, reduced frequency of maternal hypoglycemia and of course reduced frequency of neonatal hypoglycemia, NICU admissions and neonatal IDS. So this is a, uh, a BMJ open article about the treatment of gestational diabetes, uh, meta-analysis, 42 trials, about 9,000 patients GDM, metformin found to be effective in reducing the risk of complications compared with the insulin or glibenclamide. And of course, metformin treatment in the first time it was associated with a statistically significant 57% protective effect. And on the basis of this data analysis, there is no evidence of an increased risk of major malformations. This is what we are worried about. And of course, first time is to exposure to metformin or not associated with the increased uh, uh, rate of major malformations. And this is another evidence to show that metformin exposure in first time is to pregnancy and risk of all specific congenital anomalies. The no evidence was found in the overall increased risk of these anomalies. And of course, there's another trial called CLUE, where the consequences of life of children with an in utero exposure to metformin in Finland, again, they found nothing about that uh, as far as the congenital anomalies were concerned. So metformin successfully overcomes all the drawbacks which is there with the injectable therapy. And finally, the ADA metformin was associated with a lower risk of neonatal hypoglycemia and less maternal weight gain. And nearly half of the patients with GDM who were initially treated with metformin in a randomized trial needed insulin in order to achieve acceptable glucose control. And ADA again talks about the women with GDM requiring medical therapy due to low cost or language barriers or comprehension or cultural influences may not be able to use insulin safely or effectively in pregnancy and oral agents can be alternative in such group of patients. And just to break the monotony of my face, you've been watching this and just look at the beautiful ladies who are there the, the, with the type two diabetes and type one diabetes. And of course, what do the guidelines talk about? The ADA clearly talks about insulin as the first line agent, metformin as a secondary option. Similarly, Canadian, nice, Italian, all that, but the Greek guidelines do not accept as a, any uh, oral drug. And of course, there are various rationals. In the Indian perspective, metformin in insulin therapy is accepted medical management in our MNT, which is the government of India. And uh, so finally, the standard of care in diabetes 2024, insulin is the preferred medication. Other oral and non-insulin injectable glucose lowering medications lack long-term safety data. Metformin, when used to treat polycystic ovary syndrome and uh, uh, induce ovulation, should be discontinued by the end of the first trimester. That is a level A evidence. And metformin glyburate should not be used as a first-line agent as both cross the placenta. And uh, people with G GDM, as I said earlier, indication, oral agents can be an alternative for these individuals after discussing with the known risk factors, uh, the risk-benefit ratio we need to talk to the parents. And however, due to the potential for growth restriction or acidosis in the setting of placental insufficiency, metformin should not be given to pregnant women who are hypertensives or preeclampsia or a risk of intrauterine growth reductions as seen. So finally, metformin is 75 years old and it's an old wine served by various pharma friends in the new bottles, in the new forms. I think, thank you very much for the patient hearing.